Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting a point by serial correlation in SPSS. As always, if you find this video useful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in the SPSS data editor fictitious data that I'll be using for this example. And I have three items. These are nominal variables, dichotomous, and one outcome variable, and this is continuous. So let's assume that we have these 50 participants, 50 records here in the data editor, and there are three items that they answer, and they can answer with a yes or a no. So a zero would represent a no, and a one would represent a yes. With these same participants, after a training program, we have a particular outcome we want to track, this outcome variable. And we record this variable, we have it as continuous. And once all these data are gathered, we want to see if one or more of these items, we want to see how they're associated with outcome. So ideally, the way we would design these items would be that if we had a yes response, that would be associated with a more positive outcome. And we want to see if that, in fact, is the case. If an individual answers yes as opposed to no on item one, item two, or item three, how does that seem to be associated with the outcome? So we, we are not saying in this example that a yes or a no predicts outcome. We're just looking at the association. So for that, we can use a point by serial correlation in SPSS. And this statistic does have certain assumptions. So for each of these dichotomous variables, I'll just call them independent variables, we would want to make sure we have homogeneity of variances here with this outcome variable. And also we would want this outcome variable to be normally distributed. So let's assume that we've met the assumption of homogeneity of variances and a normally distributed dependent variable here for the point by serial correlation. And next I'm going to go to analyze and correlate, then bivariate. So this is the bivariate correlations dialog, and this is what it looks like by default. And this is where we would typically perform correlations between multiple continuous variables, like the outcome variable. And here, notice we have the nominal variables, in this case, dichotomous. It can only be one value or the other, there's two possible values. And I'm going to load these into the variables list box, and I'm going to put all the variables over here, all the dichotomous variables, all three, and the outcome variable. So we could think of these as the independent variables, the items, and the outcome as the dependent variable. Due to the type of research question, we're asking of these data. Under options, I'm going to check off means and standard deviations under the statistics frame. That's the only change I'm going to make there. No changes under style. Here under correlation coefficients, you can see that Pearson is checked off by default. Kendall's tau B is not. Spearman is not. We're just going to leave those unchecked. And the test of significance will be two-tailed. That is selected by default as well. We're also going to flag significant correlations. That's checked off by default, so I can click OK here. And we have our descriptive statistics. We can see the mean for the outcome, 50.74, standard deviation, 6.877. And for the items, we also have a mean value. Keep in mind, the item values can only be a 0 or 1. So as we're interpreting this mean statistic, we could see that for items two and three, there were more yes responses than no responses. There were more ones than zeros because the mean is greater than 0.5. And for item one, there were more no's than yeses, more zeros than ones because the mean is less than 0.5. Then I'll move down to this correlations table. And we can see that we have all of the variables. We have all the correlations for all the combinations of the variables. However, in this case, of most interest would be 
how items 1, 2, and 3 correlate with outcome. So let's interpret that first. We have outcome here, and of course for outcome on the column it's going to be a perfect correlation of 1. But Then we move to item 3 and we have a statistically significant correlation here, a p-value of 0 0.002, and that correlation is 0 0.419. So we have a statistically significant positive correlation between item 3 and the outcome variable. So this tells us that yeses, the 1 value on item 3, tend to be associated with higher values on the outcome variable. And the same thing for item 2. 0 0.451 is statistically significant. So we know that the yes responses are more associated with higher values on this outcome variable. Item 1 is similar, but we don't have a statistically significant finding. The correlation is 0 0.089, the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient, 0 0.089, and we have a non-statistically significant result, 0.537. So the yes values are a little more associated with higher values of the outcome variable but it's not statistically significant. And with this value of 0 0.089, we would most likely say that there's really no relationship between item one and the outcome variable. And as we look at the relationships between item one and item three, we have a small negative correlation. Again, no real relationship there. And item two and item three, a negative relationship it's a little stronger than we have here between item 1 and item 3, however it's still not statistically significant. If we look at the relationship between item 2 and item 3, it's 0.578. That's the Pearson's R value there, and that is statistically significant. Now as we look at just the items and their relationship with the outcome, we notice here we don't have any negative correlations. If we did have a negative correlation here, it would mean that the no response, the zero response for the item, was more associated with a higher outcome score. And of course, here we have the positive, so the yeses are more associated with an outcome score. The response is equal to one. So let's take a look at these relationships on a scatter dot, which is makes it a little easier to understand sometimes. Go to graphs legacy dialogs and scatter dot. And I'm going to select the simple scatter and click define. And we're going to run these one at a time. So on the x-axis I'm going to put the items. So in this case item 1, which we know has a non-statistically significant correlation with the outcome variable. And on the y-axis the outcome variable. And click OK. And we can see for item 1 we just have 0 over here and 1. We just have those two values. It's dichotomous. And if you look at the distribution of scores on this outcome variable, the scores for 1 are a little higher than the scores for 0. And sometimes it helps in this instance, I'll double click here, to add a linear fit line to the chart. And I'll do that and close this and go back to the statistics viewer. And we can see that the slope is just 1.29. So the y-intercept is 50.3 and the slope is 1.29. The line is mostly flat, but it does have a slight increase as we move from the zero response on item one to the one response on item one. So how about the other variables? We go into graphs, legacy dialogues, I'll move back to that scatter dot, a simple scatter, and I'll just pull item one out and put item two in on that x-axis. Click OK. And here we can see the outcome scores are quite a bit higher for the one response as opposed to the zero response on item two. Again, double click here. I can add that linear fit line. 
and close out of these. And we can see the slope here is 7.67. So a much larger slope than we had with item one and the outcome variable from 1.29 to 7.67. And we'll go ahead and run item three as well, the same process. So here I'll remove item two from the x-axis, put on item three, click OK. And again, we can see the values here for the one value for item three are higher on the outcome variable than the zero response for item three. I add that linear fit line. And we can see here the slope is 5.82. So we can see the association between the dichotomous variables and the outcome variable on these scatter dots and in this correlations table. I hope you found this video on using the point by serial correlation in SPSS to be helpful. Thanks for watching.